This is a tutorial on how to model the greenhouse out of the Curious Cabin series by Stefan Grosse. You can find him on Instagram under the name Plastic Pen or check out the link in the description. Start by shrinking the default cube on the z-axis and scaling it to the size of the ground. Then add a second cube and move it up on the z-axis. Now scale it to the size of the first floor and move it to the side. For the wall ornaments, extrude out some differently sized squares. Then extrude out the second floor and end it with another ornament. For the greenhouse part of the roof, we are first going to block it out. Just focus on the proportions here. For the rounded parts of the roof, we are going to use the bevel tool. To increase the number of cuts, just scroll up on the mouse wheel. As you can see, by using the bevel tool, we created some doubled vertices. To fix that, just select the vertices, hit M, and select Merge at Center. Next, we're going to add subdivisions for the windows of the greenhouse. Start by adding a loop cut at the center of each side. To add a loop cut that goes straight, press E to let it snap to one side, and F to change the side it snaps to. Now you just have to let it snap to the center loop cut that is straight. To divide one side into thirds, just bevel the center loop cut. Now repeat that with the other side as well. To delete the new double vertices, select All and press M, to merge by distance. For the subdivisions near the corner, add no loop cuts. Then select the three vertices with the center one being the active one, hit M and select merge at last. By selecting a vertice and pressing G two times, you can move it along the edge. Using that technique, you can go around and straighten out the corner edge loops. For the main support beams, we're going to add some loop cuts and then bevel the corners. Now select all the faces and extrude them along the normals. Then you can go out of edit mode and by right clicking on the object, you can change the shade to smooth. Go back into edit mode, select the faces of the center part and then press I two times to inset the individual faces. Then press Alt E to extrude along the normals. Now select every second segment of your roof and inset the combined faces. Extrude those faces along the normals too. Then repeat that for the remaining segments. Go to the bottom of the building and add a fundament to it. Then make a loop card and extrude in a part of the building to make room for the cafe. Go into side view and add a cube for the frame of the shop window. Scale it to the right size, copy it and rotate it for the vertical beams. For the window pane, copy the faces from the back side and move them to the front. For the slanted roof at the side of the building, extrude out one side face and move it down. Tap out of edit mode, move the cursor to the roof and add a circle. Then change the number of vertices to 16 in the bottom left menu. Press numpad slash to isolate the view and delete half of the vertices. Extrude out the outer vertices and press F to connect them. Then select all and press F to make a new face. And then scale everything down and move it to the right place. Add a solidify modifier, adjust the thickness and then add an array modifier. Change the offset from the x to the y axis and then play with the count and the size of the tiles to make them fit the size of the roof. Then copy the tiles with Alt D and move them to the right place. For the pillar, add another cube. Scale it down and then extrude it out. To make the pillow look more interesting, select the bottom edge of the top part and bevel it. 
In the Bevel menu, change the profile type to custom and either choose a preset or create your own profile by using the curve in the bottom. Keep in mind that you have to increase the segments for the profile to show in the bevel. When you're done, copy the pillar and place it into the other corners of the building. Copy it one more time and move it up to the second floor. And then press P to separate it from the rest. Adjust the scale and position. And then add an array modifier. Change the offset from the X to the Y axis and then increase the count to 4. Now adjust the offset so the spread is even. Copy that for the other side, rotate it 90 degrees and then change the count to 2. For the stairs add another cube and scale it down. Extrude at the front part and then bevel the edge. In the bevel menu under profile type select custom and then set the preset to stairs. Select the side phases, inset them and then extrude them along the normals. Go into vertex select mode and select the outer edge of the platform and one vertex on the bottom stair. Then press pre and separate the selection. Go back into object mode and change the mesh into curve. Go back into edit mode and put the cursor to the vertex near the wall. Then set the origin to cursor. Add a plane, go into edit mode and rotate it 90 degrees on the y axis. Scale it down to the height of a railing and then add some loop cuts. Turn on proportional editing and set it to sphere. Then make the bottom part of the railing curve out and the top part curve in. Then add in solidify and then subdivision modifier. We could now array the railing along the curve, but as you can see that would rotate and deform the railing along the curve as well, and we don't want that. Therefore we're going to add another plane, and then add the array modifier to that plane instead. Change the offset from relative to constant. And then select fit to curve. Here you can select the curve we made earlier. Then add a curve modifier and under curve object select our curve again. Select the plane and then merge it at the center. So now instead of a plane we only have one vertex. Now we will parent the railing to our vertices. Make sure the vertices are in the bright color for that. Then in the object menu to the right under instancing select vertices. As you can see we fix the rotation problem but we still want the railing to rotate on the z-axis. Therefore I just copied everything and changed the rotation in the copy. Then I went back in and deleted all the parts I didn't need. Then I adjusted the offset so the railing isn't floating in the air. Now you can also make sure that you disable the visibility of the original railing in the render. For the handle, I just copied the original curve and moved it up on the z-axis. Then in the curve menu, on the bevel, just increase the depth. Lastly, I changed the shade to auto smooth. For the windows on the top floor, add a circle. Change the alignment to view, the vertices to 32, and the fill type to n-gon. Go into edit mode and then extrude and scale up. Delete the lower left quarter of vertices and repeat that for the right side. In the upper menu, enable snapping and select snap to vertex. Then extrude down the other two vertices along the z-axis and let it snap to the bottom vertex. Connect the bottom three vertices and extrude them down two more times. Now you can adjust the proportions and then select the outer edge, extrude it and scale it up. Isolate the view and line the outer vertices up with the rest. Then fill the empty faces. Press A to select everything and extrude it out. Go into face select mode and inset the window faces. Then extrude them in. And then select the arch and extrude it out. Select the outer edge of the window frame, copy it and separate it. Scale it on the Y axis and then close the open faces. Select the main building and add a boolean modifier. Then under object, select the window cutout. To actually see the boolean, display the cutout as wire. I only want the boolean to affect the lower part of the building, so I'm separating the roof. As you can see, the boolean isn't working properly, so I'm adding a solidify modifier. Change the thickness to a value where it isn't glitching anymore. Then parent the cutout to the window. Go into edit mode and copy the window around the building.
for the winners of the first floor at applying a skeleton. Then add some loop cuts. Select everything and extrude it out. Select the frame and extrude it out. Select the edges that form the cross in the middle and bevel them. Then extrude the window panes in. For the shutters, inset the side faces and extrude them along the normals. Now you can add some ornaments by using the inset tool and loop cuts. To add some details to the shutters, we're going to add another plan. Scale it down and rotate it on the x-axis. Then add an array modifier and change the offset to something negative on the z-axis. After that, add a solidify modifier. Then copy it to the other side as well. Prime the shutter details to the window and then copy it around the building with Alt D. For the door, add a plane, go into edit mode and scale it down. Add some loop cuts. And then extrude everything. Insert the door and add a loop cut in the center. Select the bottom two faces and create some ornamentation using the insert tool. Then create some windows on the top part using the same technique. Extrude the bottom part of the door frame along the normals and then add another loop cut to the top part. Select the top faces of the door frame and extrude them out. Then move the top row on the Y axis. Add some more loop cuts and with proportional editing enabled, move the middle part back on the Y axis. After that, extrude the bottom faces. Select the center top faces and extrude them out. Select the outer edges and bevel them. Then select the crown molding preset and increase the amount of cuts. Inset the front center faces, extrude them out and then scale them down. Then select the outer front faces, inset them and move them along the Y axis. For the table, add a cylinder and scale it down. Then select the bottom face and extrude it out. Now add a cube for the chair. Go into edit mode, scale it down and move it to the side. Then scale it up along the Y axis. To make the legs, copy the cube and rotate it. Repeat that for the other leg as well and then extrude out the back of the chair. Now we'll move this legs to the side so it doesn't clip. Then add a mirror modifier and enable clipping. Add some loop cuts to the seat in the back of the chair. Select the inner faces and insert them. Then extrude them out. Now you can go out of edit mode and adjust the scale if needed. Copy the chair with Alt-D and then parent the chairs to the table. Now you can copy the table set and place it on the sidewalk and in the cafe. For the sunroof, add a cylinder, change the vertices to 16, rotate it on the x-axis and scale it down. Then select one of the side faces and extrude it out. Add some loop cuts and with proportional editing and enabled, move it down on the z-axis. Then add another cylinder for the front part. Change the shade to smooth. For the rain pipe, add a curve. Go into edit mode and rotate it 90 degrees. Then right click on the curve and set the handle type to poly. Then change up the shape of the pipe using the extrude tool.
In the curve menu, increase the depth under bevel, and then if you have this weird glitch like me, make sure to toggle cyclic off. If you want to add more subdivisions, you can do that by selecting two vertices and then right click on the object to subdivide. To make the bottom of the pipe flare out, select the last vertice and press Alt S to scale it. Then convert the curve to mesh, add a solidify modifier, and select some of the loops to bevel them and extrude them along the normals. Change the shade to outer smooth, and if you have these random lines, go to the side menu and increase the angle. I then decided to add some flower pots to the sidewalk. Therefore, add another cylinder and extrude out the shape of the flower pot. Then add a curve for the stem of the plant. Extrude out a winding shape. And then add some geometry to the curve in the curve menu. For the leaves, we are first going to add an icosphere. Scale it to the right size and then move around some faces to make the shape seem more organic. Now copy that two more times. Then add a plane and model the simple shape of a leaf. Then place the origin to the bottom of the leaf. Now we will distribute the leaves on the icosphere using a particle system. Change the particle system from emitter to hair. And then under render, select render as object. Here we are going to select our leaf. Adjust the scale and increase the scale randomness. Then select the advanced feature and randomize the rotation. As you can see, the rotation doesn't show up. So we have to change the orientation axis from velocity hair to normal tangent. To add plants to the inside of the greenhouse, we are first going to change the viewport display of the rooftop to wireframe. Then add a plane, select everything and merge at the center, so we only have a vertice left. Using that vertice, we are going to extrude out the shape of a tree. Make sure you check it from the other sides as well, since it's a 3D object. If you're satisfied with the shape, add a skin modifier to the tree. You'll notice the skin modifier is way too thick. To fix that, press Ctrl A and scale it down. Then go back in and adjust the individual scale of the vertices. Then add a subdivision modifier. Then scale it and place it so it fits nicely in the greenhouse. For the leaves, we're going to add icospheres again. Then add a plane for the ground of the greenhouse. Then you can click on the plane and in the particle menu just select the particle system we made earlier. Repeat that for the icospheres as well. You may notice that the particle systems don't look the same for all the objects. To circumvent that, just copy the particle system and change the settings in the copy. So it won't affect the original particle system. Add a cube for the background, scale it up and then bevel it. Now add a bevel to all the other objects as well. You can do that either by using a bevel modifier or beveling it by hand in the edit mode. To save some time, you can select similar objects and then press Ctrl L and copy the modifiers. If the bevel modifier isn't working properly, it most likely has to do something with flipped normals or double vertices.
Now we can split the viewport and display the cube as wireframe to make the scene easier to work with. Now select the camera and change the type from perspective to orthographic. Then adjust the position using the slide bars. Change the render engine to cycles, the device to GPU, lower the sample size and check the denoise feature. Then change the left viewport to rendered view. I also changed it to a square resolution. Now grab the light, place it and adjust the power and radius. Then copy the light for some colored backlighting. Lower the power and change the color. Now remove all the icons from the left viewport. Change the right viewport to material view and start texturing. For the roof, change from the principal shader to a glass BDSDF. Adjust the roughness and the IOR to your liking. Then hit the plus to add a second material for the support beams. Select all the faces you want to have the glass material and then assign the material to the faces. And here's my result. If you followed along with this tutorial, I would love to see yours. See you next week. Bye!